You are Associate Professor of Urban Water Management at the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Geosciences at the Delft University of Technology. Uh, well, at the Rio's New University, my, my primary role is, of course, to, to uh, do some research in, in the field of urban water management and sustainable urban water management, uh, focusing in particular on um, such sustainable urban drainage systems uh, and, say, what is called nowadays circular economy, uh, closed cities, so how to close uh, cycles in the urban water system. Um, my primary role is to focus on the whole urban water system now, so not specifically on the, on the sewerage system, uh, but uh, focusing on urban surface water, groundwater, sewerage, drainage, uh, water supply, and how the whole system uh, coheres. You're also an expert advisor in urban and urban water management um, at Deltares. Uh, we see you are involved in many projects. Um, our focus lies in Europe. What's the most interesting project you've been doing in European water management lately? Uh, well, my, my role here at Eltares is, uh, um, first of all, I'm a team leader urban land and water management, uh, which means that I'm coordinating uh, a lot of work uh, here in the Institute, uh, uh, applied research uh, in the field of urban water management, uh, but also urban water management in relation to spatial planning and, and uh, uh, urban development and redevelopment. Are you also closely then involved with uh, urban architects and special yeah, planners? Yeah, we are closely cooperating with, uh, with uh, uh, urban planners in particular and, and urban landscape architects uh, doing green infrastructure planning, making the detailed design. Uh, we come from, from uh, a water management perspective of course, uh, uh, while they make the detailed designs on, uh, on how these facilities could look like. Uh, and, and, um, we promote multifunctional use of these facilities, for example. Uh, a water square, for example, uh, is, is a nice storage facility, but it, meanwhile it's, it's a recreational facility, it's a landscape element. Uh, so you have to, to collaborate in, in, uh, in the design of these yeah. facilities closely. And those, those functional requirements start probably with water management, and then there are the aesthetic requirement, requirements which come from the archives. How do these two come together? It's really a, co a cooperative process to come to a decent design, uh, to, to take care that all the hydrological uh, requirements are met uh, in what quantity and in what quality uh, and in ecology. Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, designing something beautiful, something attractive, some, something uh, well, that, that could be used in, in other ways in the urban environment, uh, whether it's a green roof or an urban wetland or a, a water square or whatever. Uh, floods on the streets. Um, we know it's coming every year. How come it's still happening? Uh, we designed our, our sewer systems uh, to fail once every two, about every two years. That's standard design. So, so uh, things like that will will happen quite frequently. Um, <laughs> the, the the question is whether that design standard is is still applicable uh, nowadays. Uh, and uh, we're going to see it more frequently in the future, simply because of climate change. Uh, we expect more frequent uh, storms, more heavy storms, uh, so flooding will, will occur more frequently uh, and more seriously in the near future. And aren't municipalities or other stakeholders not taking the problem seriously that it actually can occur every year? Uh, oh, I disagree, no, I, I think they, they, they are, are taking the problem seriously. Uh, there's, there's a wide concern nowadays that, that uh, 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 pluvial flooding, as we call it, uh, flooding by extreme rainfall, yep. uh, will occur more frequently. And the, the problem is not so much that, that, well, there is some flooding on the street, the problem is the damage it does. Uh, um, so, so the question is, uh, how much are you going to invest in, in resolving the problem of the flooding, and how much are you going to invest in, in uh, resolving the problem of the damage? Uh, you could either invest in, 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 in 
increased drainage capacity, increased storage capacity, or, or in, in reducing the damage sensitivity of your urban environment. Uh, huh? Two ways to, to go that are uh, well, both widely applicable. Basically, you're talking about risk, whether it's it's yes, impact definitely. time yeah. times the chance that yeah, happens. Yeah, so, so uh, and we tend to, uh, from a hydrological viewpoint, you tend to focus on the first, uh, on the say <laughs> the probability of failure uh, to reduce the probability of failure. Here, whereas nowadays we we try to include a second component, and uh, <laughs> I tend to call that how to design a failing system. Huh? That is, uh, can we design a system that minimizes the damage? Uh, uh, that's an important challenge uh, for the future as so. well. What are th the three, well, let's say, quick wins municipality could do practically to, to resolve pluvial flooding? Um, <laughs> I think the, 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 the quick wins are in, in storage, not in, in, in discharge capacity. Yeah? Increasing a discharge capacity from a flat land like we have is always difficult. Yeah? It's very hard to make water flow if there's no gradient. Uh, um, another quick win could be in, in, in simply investigating your damage sensitivity. Yeah? Um, see where vulnerable and vital objects are. Uh, vital infrastructure and, and protect that uh, infrastructure in a better way. Um, that's simply to avoid that, that essential components of the urban system fail even though the street is flooded. You mentioned storage is, is, the, is a first quick win, uh, especially in a flat country like the Netherlands. Uh, would that also be the case for European countries where um, well, there is a lot more uh, level difference? <laughs> Definitely so, uh, al although first of all many of our cities are located in lowlands and on, on, in flat areas, uh, we shouldn't forget that. But uh, even if you uh, are in, in, in sloping terrains, uh, storage is extremely important. Uh, the moment you can retain or detain water higher on the hill, <laughs> uh, avoiding it to, to rush down and uh, to cause flash floods further downstream is, is extremely important. We've just been talking about retaining and detaining stormwater. What are your thoughts on uh, urban storage solutions? Our storage solutions are extremely important and will become more important in the future. Uh, climate change is expecting uh, is, is we expect it brings more uh, pluvial flooding, but also more droughts and more heat stress. And uh, first of all, for droughts you need water, so. Uh, uh, retaining water uh, to, to have water available for irrigation during dry periods of your garden is, is, is a simple solution. But I think more important is the fact that uh, for urban heat stress reduction and for energy reduction in the urban environment, uh, uh, cooling energy reduction, uh, we can use that, that very same water that, that we retained in our retention facilities. Huh? Um, we have to realize that, that uh, the urban heat island is largely caused by the fact that, that urban uh, areas cannot sweat. Uh, the fact that they are so dry, uh, uh, there's no, not sufficient e evaporation, causes the temperatures to run up, uh, like, you, like your body temperature. If you're unable to sweat, your body temperature will run up. Same holds for, uh, for urban areas. And um, so if we can make more water available uh, for uh, evaporation during these hot periods, yeah, that would reduce the, uh, the, the ambient air temperatures, would also reduce the need for, for cooling and the, the, need, the energy demand for cooling. Uh, we see an enormous increase in attention for, for rainwater harvesting at the moment, stormwater harvesting, and um, I, I consider that an extremely de uh, important development for the future of our urban drainage systems. As Wavin, uh, we, uh, we produce modular infiltration and attenuation units. What do you think about such solutions? 
part of the of the, the solution set that that uh, we need for for a sustainable urban drainage system. So that's that's how it, this whole thing started. Uh, uh, not only for, uh, for for groundwater control and for drainage, uh, but also for active storage, for for uh, uh, detention of the, of, of stormwater runoff, for for water quality improvement. It's a new development in in in, in, in creating boxes uh, for stormwater infiltration uh, and, and subsurface solutions. Um, so so. Um, uh, in, in that sense, it's not not new. It's it's new in the way it is performed and, and, and the maintenance uh, opportunities that it has. Um, for the installation of uh, a, a modular unit like the Wavin Cubic Plus, what is a what are the important aspects we have to look at when we install those? Of course, of course that starts with, with, with the urban groundwater. <laughs> uh, I think the whole interaction of these facilities with the urban groundwater is extremely important. And huh? uh, one of one of the, the the important aspects of, of implementation nowadays is the fact that um, well, drainage engineers tend to, to pay a lot of attention to surface water and to to, to uh, rainfall runoff processes, not so much to urban groundwater. Whereas these facilities interact with urban groundwater, so, so uh, uh, interaction is extremely important. It's part of a, part of its function. Uh, so, um, and and if it comes to to say the whole the whole interplay between uh, the storage facility and the groundwater, um, I, another aspect uh, that is important is say the, the risk of clogging of these facilities. Eh? Uh, we are now talking about. Uh, drainage infiltration transport sewers or boxes that infiltrate and exfiltrate. Um, well, that, that means that it's not only the, the box or the, or, the, or, the, or the pipe that is important, it's also the, 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 the wrapping material, the, the material that surrounds uh, your facility that is extremely imp in, uh, important. And, uh, as, as this material should uh, retain its permeability over, over a long run, for example. So, so having the proper materials, having a, uh, a, a very careful installation of these uh, these materials, and, and, and having a careful installation of the uh, of the facilities is, is extremely important for the longevity of uh, of the system. Thank you very much for for this interview. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure talking to you, um, and um, very helpful, very interesting insights you gave us into the world of urban water management. Oh, thank you so much. Welcome.